This week, President Trump addressed the nation in an effort to boost confidence that his administration is well equipped to handle any broader outbreak of the coronavirus here in the U.S. Joining us now to talk about the administration's response to the coronavirus story, his former senior communications advisor for the Trump 2016 campaign, host of the podcast War Room Pandemic, Jason Miller himself. Jason, thanks for coming on the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me back. Glad to so, have you. Jason, you have tracked this. You know, you started this podcast five weeks ago. You've tracked it very early days in China. What do you, first of all, let's lay out how, why you decided to start the podcast, you and Steve Bannon, to really look into the political effects on this and how President Trump should be handling it so far. Well, we saw the way that the world was moving here, that this wasn't the biggest story in the United States, but it was the biggest story in the rest of the world, particularly in China. I mean, think of where we are right now. I mean, we literally have a population the size of France mm -hmm. that is quarantined at this very moment That's in crazy. China. And so right. while we haven't seen this massive outbreak here in the U.S., and we'll get to the administration's response, and I think we're doing everything that we need to at this point. We're taking some proactive action. But in the rest of the world, particularly in the Far East, I mean, this is a true global pandemic. Yeah, it is. And what was it that you saw in those early days that caused you to, you know, to believe that it would spread more broadly? And what do you make of the Chinese government response before we get to the U.S. response? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the Chinese government's been anything but truthful on this. And this is part of the reason why we started. It was because we saw that we weren't getting the information. When you ask what was it that we saw, a lot of it was what was it that we did not see. Yeah. And that was accurate information. We've had a number of people on who said the accurate counts could be as much as 10 times higher in China. And you see the way that they're dealing with it. They don't even know yet what they're dealing with. The fact that they're not prepared and you have these mixes of population density plus uh, potentially mutating virus and something that we haven't encountered before. This is what's leading to this new global pandemic. But again, where we're now starting to see these community spreads where people who had not traveled to another country or people had not directly interacted with someone, this is where this is the jump off point to where it becomes bigger. And this is why ultimately these population quarantines or segmentation become so important on slowing and ultimately stopping the spread of this. Yeah, and one of the things, you know, really profound thing you said, Jason, five weeks, you said Trump is now a wartime president. I, I actually agree. And yet I was a bit disappointed in his press conference comparing it to the com, you know, the common flu, saying, oh, well, X amount of people, I didn't know that, trying to put it in perspective. I understand why he's doing that. But the mortality rates that we're seeing are about 20 times higher than the common flu. How do you think of the administration's response so far? I mean, I think the travel ban probably was the right thing to do. But now in terms of the setting expectations game, what do you make of President Trump's con uh, press conference? In particular. Well, here's why I like why the president mm -hmm. went out and did that, because the nation needed to hear from him. And I yeah. think he went out and made sure that people understood the severity and just how serious this, uh, this is. But he also put President or Vice President Pence mm -hmm. in charge there and, and had the whole rest of the team with him. So he's showing that the full government is on watch on this. But I think it's also important to make sure that we're realizing this is a much longer game here. Right. This isn't something about quelling the market for a couple of days or even into next week. I mean, we could literally, as we talk about the political ramification, the the November 2020 election could be a decision on who is best yes. to keep us safe in the face of this coronavirus, Sanders or Trump. That could be the ultimate decision as much as we talk about economy and other things. Yeah, yeah. I think that's very well said. I mean, at the same time, we, we have received some troubling info. I mean, first you had the um, passengers from that cruise ship who were flown back with people who were healthy. Um, that was apparently, you know, not President Trump's decision. Reportedly, he was very upset about that. Then you had reports from a whistleblower that those who were dealing with infected patients didn't have proper protective gear and went off some of them then to travel without being quarantined. I mean, what do you make of of this, you know, sloppiness so far at each step of the way. Well, I think to that point, when we talk about mistakes that have been made so far, and there definitely have been some mistakes, I think it's important to keep in mind that the entire world was not ready for this. Yes, the U.S. has made some mistakes, but every country has made mistakes in this, particularly when we talk about— doesn't make me feel better, Jason. No. <laughs> but, 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 but that's part of the but, thing. Yeah, <laughs> this is the reality. You're talking yeah. about the standard that right. there's somebody always should be held to. Not, right. so, not so much the standard, because I don't yeah. want to gloss over mistakes that have been made. Yeah. Clearly, that was a mistake to bring infected people right. back to the United States and essentially import uh, the disease. Yes, that was a mistake. But I think it's also important mm -hmm. to point out that the reason why this has blown up and spread the way that it has is because no government was ready for this. 
this. Right. And in particular, the Chinese, the way they kept it quiet. I mean, look, when they were over here uh, finalizing that phase one deal, uh, when they were in Davos, they knew that this was an issue. They knew that this was blowing up and they didn't tell us. And they were locking up doctors who later died of coronavirus who were right. trying to blow the whistle about what was going on there. Right. And, and one thing, Chris, yeah. I want to go back to your point yeah. just about the mistakes been made. And I think this is why you're seeing President Trump with the elevation of Vice President Pence to do this, bringing in Deborah Burks, who's mm -hmm. been around in a number of administrations for the last couple of decades. She's been running the U.S.'s anti-AIDS, anti-HIV effort, PEPFAR, a number of other yes. programs. She's a serious player. She's the real deal. And I think the way the government's now consolidating a lot of this to say, hey, we need to start running this in a tight ship to where we have, we understand what the messages are. People aren't out there saying different things. I think they're starting to realize that, hey, this is a global pandemic here and we have to treat it like it. I was glad that the administration got out as early as they did with some of the uh, travel restrictions and mm -hmm. things like that. I'm glad that the president's now done this press conference. We would like to see it a little bit earlier. Yeah, I think so. That's it, right. Well, one thing, Jason, I want to focus on too is about the markets in particular because you saw Larry Kudlow go out there and I think it was not a great statement when he said the virus is contained. I think we all know that's not true. There seems to be an obsession to try and contain the market and that's what you alluded to. This is not about the markets anymore. I actually think one of the more interesting discussions here is about the supply chain, medical supply chain, yeah. is that we are essentially completely incapable of manufacturing any critical medicines that we need here as a nation. Do you think, do we need to hear more from that from President Trump and maybe some national initiatives about building up our own domestic capacity in order to make sure, because this reveals how China has been able to basically take so much of U.S. production in so many different critical industries. So a number of things in that. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Warsh was on CNBC this morning calling for a rate cut yeah. uh, as soon as Monday. I think you could see something like that happen, help uh, the economy along. But when I said this isn't about the market, it's very much about mm. the overall economy because this is what makes a wartime president. You have the economy. And look, the way we used to talk about kinetic wars, uh, when it was our country versus another country, then after the terrorist attacks of 9-11, we saw our country versus non-state actors. We're now in a 21st century war where this isn't just a, a mutating virus uh, that's coming from, coming across borders and becoming from allies, becoming from foes, but also the way that's impacting the economy and just the well-being of the world. So that's why I said President Trump is now a wartime president. This very much is about the economy, but it's not just about the short-term economy. This is about the longer health. And I think what you talk about with the supply chains and realizing a lot of these drugs, we just don't have them. Or we talk about the, the action the administration took yesterday to say um, it hasn't been implemented since the Korean War, but where we can take assembly lines and start right. having them manufacture things like the um, the like safety masks, masks and stuff like as that. opposed to going for, say, painters make them for this. Uh, these are the types of things when you realize, uh-oh, when we, uh, in globalism, I and mean, you guys literally mm -hmm. wrote the book on populism, <laughs> when we talk about how we, these supply chains, when everything is international, and we don't have these core critical yeah. things. I mean, in fact, I, I've seen talking heads say, maybe it's a good idea to start stocking up on pharmaceuticals that are made in China, because what if the supply chain is slowed down? And you think about, let, let's talk about the ramifications. So like a Korean Air, for example, which uh, one of their stewardesses had it. Obviously, Korea's had a big outbreak, and that stewardess was just in L.A. Um, I mean, Korean Air is in some real trouble. That's just take one industry, but where do they get their planes from, or who makes the planes? Well, Boeing is obviously mm -hmm. the biggie. So you see the, you know, we've seen everything from, you know, Diet Cokes, uh, you know, yes, Coca Coke Cola, yeah. saying, uh, you know, it's a personal you know, impact me in a huge way. But we've <laughs> seen that where all these, all these little things in this global economy, even cars that are manufactured here in the United States, um, have little pieces and little parts that are made in China that aren't easy. And so yeah. if we realize this security aspect, I mean, this is a big deal. And this is why I'm glad to see the administration taking this action and consolidating this. And here's the, the ultimate bottom line here. We didn't start this. It's not our fault that this happened. We will be the ones to solve it because the U.S. is going to be the best prepared. We have the best people. We have the smartest people. We have the resources to do it. And if this is going to get turned around, it's going to be the U.S. that has to do it. Yes. Well, I mean, you won't hear any objection from us about, you know, the points you're making about China <laughs> and trade. And, you know, I mean, interestingly, Bernie Sanders is the only Democrat who also has been out front on this issue. So, you know, politically, it'll be interesting if the two of them are going head to head. But are you what do you know about how many test kits are available? Do you feel confident in that area as well? There was some 
reporting out of California that a critically ill woman there right. who ultimately did test positive for coronavirus, it's very hard to convince the CDC to test her. She didn't meet the initial requirements. And there's also some questions over whether they have sufficient test kits if this does break out into a, a larger outbreak. What have your experts told you there? What do you know about that issue? Well, what I, I mean, obviously, this is a global pandemic. And so the world as a whole is not quite prepared for this. And I think we're catching up. Uh, but I have seen reports where we're sending out more kits. And so I'll let the, the government and the CD, mm. CDC speak to that a little bit more directly. Uh, but clearly, we're playing a little bit of catch up here. Uh, but I, I'm glad to see the administration is doing everything they can to get these moving. Uh, again, wish some of these things had happened a little yeah. bit sooner. You know, Jason, I think the wartime framework is so, so important. Thank you for what you're doing over there on the podcast. Really appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Thanks People for should me. check out Absolutely. the podcast. Absolutely. There's lots of new polling for the South Carolina race, but just how accurate are those numbers? We're going to preview the South Carolina primary with Team Rising when Rising continues this Friday.